Uh, how was your? Uh, it it is Sunday now, right? So how was yesterday? How was your Saturday? Saturday. Oh, yeah. Saturday. Mm, I met the neighbor's wife. Uh huh. <laughs> In the first grand. Uh huh. Yeah. She is a nosy person, so I avoided her. But finally, I met her <laughs> in the corridor of the first, first floor. That's awesome. Did you, are you guys she friends? found my arm. Oh, what happened? <laughs> so I needed to explain about that from the scratch. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Nice. That's great. I know sometimes sometimes we have neighbors who are uh, different uh, different personality, right? Sometimes sometimes they're nosy. Sometimes they have difficult uh, or just different uh, you know personalities. I know yeah. my my mom had a neighbor when I was a young child. Uh, this neighbor used to always come to my mother, yeah, and and ask for just small things in the house, right? Like mm. she didn't have sugar in her house, she'd come to my mother. You know, mm. can I please borrow some sugar? And my mom used to tell me later, you can't borrow sugar. You got, you take it. I mean, you know, <laughs> there's no way to borrow sugar, borrow food, right? So uh, she had those problems when she was uh, younger, in her mid-20s. Um, mm. uh, no, not mid-20s, like early 30s, I should say. So, yeah, n nosy, nosy neighbors sometimes are yeah. not very fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Hey, how's it going, Yulisa? Hey, Farhan. I'm doing well, and you? Good, good. Things are great. Uh, how's your Saturday? Hey, it is good. It was good. I, uh, in the morning, I went to to take some certificates, uh -huh. and in the afternoon, I went for shopping and to eat uh, a dessert. Nice. What kind of dessert was it? Flan? No, it's called <laughs> picaro picarones. Picarones, okay. It's very Peruvian. <laughs> I need to get a picture of this picarones here. Let's see. Oh, this is this looks like a, a fried donut. Yeah, yeah, but it's made of. Yeah, it's like a donut, but it tastes different, and we put honey to cover it. It's That's awesome. It, it look it looks super delicious. Yeah, picarones. Um, awesome, fantastic. It's very appropriate for our class today because we're talking about food, and we're actually talking about bazaar food. Uh, you know, uh, bazaar to me, bazaar to somebody from a Western uh, perspective, I guess. Um, before we do that, though, Felipe, how's it going, man? Hey, good, and you? Good, good. How's life in uh, Brazil? Well, busy as always, I guess. <laughs> yeah, right. Good, good to be back in your class. Absolutely, well, good to have you as well. Um, Quang, how's it going? How's Vietnam? Yeah, it's going well, teacher. Thank you, thank you very much. Awesome. Been? I've been good. I've been good. I'm glad to see so many yeah. people join in the first five minutes. <laughs> this is great. So. Actually, guys, let's get started, and let's quickly... Um, have you guys all met each other? Felipe, Heidi, Ulisa, Kwang? Have you guys met each other? I've yeah. met Heidi uh -huh. and Lisa, too, but not, not Kwang. Kwang. No. Uh -huh. Kwang, do you want to introduce yourself to everyone? Yes, I'm, uh, I know Heidi and uh, Ulisa, but uh, I don't know Felipe. Felipe, uh, I'm from Vietnam. And why? Uh, I like uh, learning English. Uh, in Colingo, I have two lovely children, a daughter and a son. Yeah. I'm a teacher in Taekwondo too. Yeah, Kwang uh, is a yeah. Kwang is a fighter. He loves uh, to uh, teach Taekwondo. So oh, really? <laughs> yeah. So especially, I think in Vietnam there are a lot of uh, people interested in that. And in another class, we were we were talking about. Um, uh, capoeira and uh, a few other uh, like martial arts, you know, from Brazil. I think Brazilian jiu-jitsu also, right, Felipe? Right. Yeah. Yeah, we have that here. Fantastic. That is awesome. So, hey, Murad, how's it going, man? Hey, how are you? Good. Good. 
How is life in la ciudad uh, soberana y libre de Monterrey? Mm, everything is all right right now. <laughs> you know, I love that about Mexico. Every state, the name is El Estado Soberano y Libre de Nuevo Laredo. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. It's like, it's it was... I was looking at the name of a, of, a, of a state in Mexico. I think it was like Chihuahua. It's like Chihuahua. El, Estado, el Estado Soberano y Libre de Chihuahua. I was like, that's so awesome. Yeah. Uh, I, I love that. I love that. Um, here in, in the U.S., we are so boring. It's just the state of New York. You know? uh, not the sovereign and free state of New Laredo I mean, or Chihuahua. That's awesome. That's awesome. Anyway. So, yeah, states, cities, counties. Yeah, a lot of things. It's it's great. It's great. I love that yeah. about different countries. So, guys, let's get started. And uh, I have a question to begin the class for all of you. So, what is the craziest thing you have ever uh, tried when it comes to food that that you've ever eaten? It can be dessert. It can be appetizer, main course. Let's start with Felipe. <laughs> It was actually a funny situation, but I think it's when I tried to eat dust. You tried to eat dust? Yes. <laughs> really? Where? I, I, I was a child, and I was <laughs> laying against the window. I don't know why, but I started to eat the little dust that was in the... That was in the window? Yes. <laughs> oh, man. Do do you remember the taste or how how was that? I mean, uh, I mean, I've tried a lot of better things after that. <laughs> <laughs> right? You probably forgot. Uh, you don't want to remember. There's no point remembering. No, yeah, I don't. That's awesome though. Dust. I've never heard that. Like, I mean, I think when we are children, we we put everything in our mouths, right? I mean, like yeah. little, like you know, little kids, like two years old, three years old. Anything that's near them, they put in their mouth, they, they taste. So, yeah, no, that makes sense, Felipe. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Heidi, what did you taste that was really crazy, the most, the most crazy thing that you ever had? It's kind of a carp, fish. But at first, they uh, get carp, and uh, or they put rice, boiled rice, inside of the uh, belly. Then uh -huh. they eat it in uh, over one year. No way. Fermented. Fermented yeah. fish? Yeah. Smell wow. it awful. <laughs> oh man. So they, they cook this fish in rice for one year? Yeah. Um they put rice in, inside of the berry, the fish. Then they put it in a dark place for one year or two years. How did that taste? Hmm. No more fish. <laughs> it tasted like normal fish, but it smelled really bad, you said, right? Yeah, very, very bad. So then how do people eat it? For very me... Sticky. Very sticky. For me, the smell is so important if I'm eating something, right? It has oh, to have... Like cheese. Right? The front, they are very uh, bad smell cheese, right? Mm -hmm. mm, like that. So some of them love that fish. Wow, that's incredible. I could have never imagined. Uh, hey, before we move on, uh, how's it going, Gaurav? Hello? Uh, hey, how's it going? Good. good, good, good. I think it's your first time in my class, man. Do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, It's the first time. Yeah. Where are you from? I'm from India. From India. I'm from Bangladesh. Welcome. <laughs> yeah. Uh, somebody from near near home, I guess. <laughs> That's great. So, Gaurav, we are actually going around the class, and we are asking everybody what our most, what is the craziest thing we have ever eaten. So, what is what is your contribution? What do you think? Yeah, the uh, the craziest thing you've ever had to eat. Oh, I think his internet was really bad, guys. Sorry about that. Maybe he'll rejoin. Uh, Yulisa, what about you? Let's go to you. Hey, okay, the strangest. It was not strange, but it was something that that made me cry. Can you hear me well? I think my connection is. 
No, I can hear you. I can hear you okay. Okay. Uh, when I was a child, my cousin that was, I guess, three years older than me, she gave me a little red thing that was like a strawberry. And she told me, take this, it's a strawberry. And when I eat it, I started to scream because it was a red chili. Oh, no and way. I started to cry. Yeah, it was horrible, remember, until today. And that is crazy. Well, after that, my parents tried to give me sugar, yeah. water. It was so yeah. crazy. And well, after that, she was punished by her parents. <laughs> Your cousin was punished? Oh, my God. Yeah. What did they What did they do to her? Did they beat her? <laughs> I don't think, but they, they yell at her. Why? Why did you do that with your little cousin? And yeah, yeah, my parents were angry. Yeah, no, absolutely. I can understand. Was it uh, like a, what kind of pepper was it? Like a like a jalapeno, like a serrano. I only know the Mexican it was a ones. Very... <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't know the name, but a red one. Those that uh, are very very spicy. Okay. Yeah, we eat a lot of spicy food in India also. So so one of the most spicy chilies in the world comes from Mexico and I think number two is from India uh, but yeah I'm sure Peru has some very spicy stuff also right yeah yeah that's awesome uh, before we go to you Murad I'm just gonna jump quickly back to um, uh, Ala uh, hey Ala what's up can you hear me Allah, Allah, Aradi. I think he cannot hear me. I'll send him a message. Murad, we'll jump to you. What is the craziest thing you've ever had to eat? The weirdest thing uh -huh. I was offered was a unit of fried locusts. No way. <laughs> yes. How was that? <laughs> to be honest, I didn't even try it. But you were offered it. Yeah. So why didn't you try it? Because uh, it's not my cup of tea. <laughs> it's not my <laughs> cup of tea. <laughs> yeah. You mean a fr fried, fried okra? Is that what you had? Locusts. Oh, locusts. Yeah, you yeah. guys know what locusts are? Yes, I wouldn't get it either. <laughs> oh my god. How can you eat that stuff? Like, how do, I mean, I shouldn't judge, but it should be... It should be. It would be very difficult for me. If the, I think the first time doing it would be very. I'm difficult. not accustomed to it. Yeah. I've never imagined somebody is go was going to eat such things. Yeah, yeah. But people do. Yeah, strange. Yes, yeah. people do. Um, Kwong, what about you? What's the craziest thing you've ever uh, had to eat? Yeah, uh, you know that I live near the sea. I love uh, the seafood. Uh huh. Um. um I um I love eating crab, crab, you know, and uh, I I go to the market uh, to buy uh, crab and ferment it with salt. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's smaller than crab, but I I don't know how to call it in English. Smaller mm -hmm. than crab. Mm -hmm. But uh, three uh when uh, I fermented three days, I uh, I open it and I I'm going to eat it. And I, I ate it uh, uh, about um, uh, some some of some of their them, and I open it. There are a lot of worm in my mouth, you know. Yeah. Uh, worms, you know, worm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, a lot like, of worms. Like, man. It's very crazy about it. Yeah. Wait, so you get worms in the worms from the crab, or because uh, I uh, I take the water from raining. To uh, ferment it with salt, mm -hmm. yeah, and people said that we do not uh, use uh, uh, rain in water. Mm -hmm. uh, this, it cannot, uh, it cannot uh, reflect with the uh, rock, so that it uh, it's born a lot of warm in the rock. When I, I eat it, <laughs> my wife uh, said to me that there are a lot of warm in my head. My mouth. <laughs> I'm surprising, and <laughs> I'm going to vomit. <laughs> yeah, no, that is crazy. I mean, does this does this happen every time you go and uh, make these 
uh, put these crabs in the salt, or was it just one time that this happened? Yeah, so the first, the first one time I tried to do it. You know, I, I also uh, do do the this for ring, ring beer, and I would like to do it. Uh -huh. And uh, the first time I do it, it's a lot of warm. Reason that I go to the market to buy and ask the the, the street vendor for the method to do it. Uh -huh. And I I try the the other time, but it's okay. There is no warm. But Thank God. I, I, I have stomach ache. Yeah. <laughs> I, you know that I go to the toilet many times, but it's okay. That is crazy. Yeah. That is crazy. I would really love to make sure that every any time we we eat something, we need to make sure that we prepare it correctly, right? Uh, the last thing we want is worms in our mouth. <laughs> Unfortunately, <laughs> <laughs> that we saw for Kwong here. So, uh, in any case, guys. So thank you guys all for. Sh yeah. yeah, go ahead, Kwong. Small, small worm, but I it's it white, it white color, but I don't know how to call it because the worm is correct. Yeah, worm is probably fine. Uh, it could be maybe I don't know some kind of larva, maybe I don't know. I mean, if it was, uh, yeah. who knows small, what it was? Small. Yeah, it's very yeah. Small. Yeah, it could be very. It was very disgusting, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. So we don't want to uh, maybe imagine it too much. Uh, but no, definitely. Thanks for sharing, Kwong. Um, so guys, let us jump to the grammar lesson real quick. And what we are talking about today is modals of deduction. Um, I think I've had all of you guys in, in a class before where we discussed modals of deduction. So I'm not going to spend too much time on the grammar. Um, I'll just go over the, the main idea. And then if you guys have questions, we can use examples also uh, to uh, understand the concept, right? So. Yeah, go ahead. Somebody? Nobody? Okay. <laughs> I thought somebody talked for a second. All right. Um, great, guys. So, modals of deduction. Uh, when we use modals of deduction in English, we are talking about how likely it is for something to have happened, right? How likely is it that something could have happened? The probability of. Uh, of chance, essentially, right? Or the probability of um, how uh, important it is that something should be done, right? In in the sense of an obligation, almost, right? So, uh, for example, when we are actually, guys, scratch what I just said. I confuse modals of deduction with modals of obligation. We are talking about modals of deduction, so we are not talking about obligation in, in this example. We are talking about the likelihood of something happening the probability of something happening, right? And it's, so it's all about chance. When we use modals of deduction, we are talking about chance, right? We are deducing. D deduction comes from deduce. We are assuming things based on signs, based on what we see, right? So if you are extremely confident about something, extremely, you, have a, you believe that there is a very high chance of something having happened, you can use the word must, right? So if you go outside and you see that the streets are wet, you can say, it must have rained yesterday, or it must have rained earlier today, right? Because that's the situation. It, uh, the streets are wet, it must have rained, right? You have a very high likelihood that, the, that, the, that there was rain recently, right? If you're only about 50% sure about something, right, then you should use the word may or might. Right. So let's say you're in the bathroom and your phone rings and your phone is in another part of the house, right? And that day you were expecting a call from your friend as well as your mother, right? Both of them said they will call you that day, but you're in the bathroom. You have no idea. So you can say, my mother might have called me or my friend might have called me. Or, my mother may have called me, my friend may have called me, right? 50% probability, yes, no, you know, right down the middle, 50%. We use may or might. And if you're even less sure about something, let's say 25% or less sure about something, then you can use could, right? We use could a lot. So, let's say somebody uh, doesn't come to work, okay? One of your colleagues doesn't come to work. And the reason could be, it could be anything, right? Maybe the person could be sick. 
the person could be uh, on vacation. You know, the person could be um, in traffic, running late, right? Running late to come to work. So these are all examples. None of these scenarios, we don't have 100% idea of anything, right? It's all a chance. We are still deducing modals of deduction. We are still deducing what the possible. Ah, sorry. Uh, uh, deducing. We are still deducing the possibilities, right? Based on what we see, or based on um, the likelihood of something happening, right? So, Felipe, let's say that you are driving in the highway, and all of a sudden you see ambulances and police and fire department, everybody coming to the highway. Also, there's now a big traffic jam. What can you say about that situation? Well, I would say an accident must have happened or something like yeah, that. Yeah, fantastic. An accident must have happened, right? Or some cars must have gotten into an accident, right? Must have gotten into an accident or must have had an accident, right? Right. So when we use must, right, we can use many different constructions of modals of deduction, right? So when we talk about, um, uh, you can make them in many different forms. You can make them in the past perfect. You can make them present perfect, right? Really, the easiest way to do it is just to keep it all in the present tense. You can keep it all in the present tense, and you can make it so that, you know, the subject plus the modal, so must, may, might, or could, then the verb be, and then the noun, right? There must be an accident, right? Uh, cars, some cars must be, uh, you know, uh, must be destroyed or could, there, there must have been an accident is actually the best way to do it in that case, right? So be is the verb to be, and we can change it to be the past perfect by saying, or the present perfect, there must have been an accident, right? That's actually the best way to do it in this example. But the more basic example of how to create modal of uh, deduction is to just use subject, modal, then the word, then the verb be, and then a noun, right? So, uh, for example, people, let's say, Heidi, let's say you are at home and you open your window and you see that people are carrying umbrellas, right? But it's late at night, so you don't, you can't see the weather. But what can you say about that situation? Uh, it must be raining. It must be raining, right? Fantastic. It must be raining, right? So we can use so many different ways, right? When we are talking about just a present case situation, we can use the subject, modal, be, a noun, right? We can also, like we saw with Felipe's case, we can make it have and then the past participle. There must have been an accident, right? There must have been an accident. And then you can also use different scenarios. You can use uh, different types of verbs depending on present, past, or perfect, right? So, Yulisa, let's say that you go to a mall, okay? You're walking in the shopping center. And all of a sudden, you see a store that has all of these signs that are, that are saying uh, final sale, no returns, everything must be sold, right? You see people are closing the doors. They are doing different things. What could you say about that store? Mm. Okay, so they are trying to sell everything. Yeah, so for example, it says on the store, everything must be sold, no returns, no refunds, nothing. Uh, and people are uh, closing the gates of the, of the store. They, they're not bringing anything new into the store. It looks like they're closing. What could you say? Mm. They must... Uh... They must need to to recover all their all what they invested. 
yeah. in clothes. <laughs> yeah, right? For example, they must recover everything that they invested, right? Do you think that business is in a good position or in a bad position? I think in a bad position. Exactly, right? So in English, actually, in colloquial American English, one of the best ways we say that if we see a store that is closing or it looks like it's closing or it's in a bad situation then we say that store must be or could be or maybe going out of business mm, going right out. going out of business if something is going out of business that means that they're failing as as a business bankrupt right? i'm sorry uh, bankrupt 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 yeah exactly right that they're bankrupt, right? There could be many situations. So Murad says, for example, maybe they were bankrupt, right? The bank came and said that you guys owe us a lot of money. We will now take your store, right? It's very possible. Uh, people get bankrupted for their homes all the time in the U.S. We have a big problem, right? Uh, people uh, everywhere in the U.S. are losing their homes to the banks, right? Or we say must be or whatever modo be. Uh, one set. Going out of business, right? So that's a good way of thinking about it. Uh, Murad, let's say you are at the airport, okay, and you see that every single flight is canceled. What can you say? It must be, or let's say. A computer error must have been occurred, or must must have occurred. Fantastic! A computer error must have occurred, right? Yes. Or, for example, let's say, are you that sure, Murad? You walk into the airport. Are you ninety-five percent sure that it was a computer error? No. Sometimes it can be due to weather circumstances. So what's a better modal of deduction to use then? I think we can use might. Exactly, right? Because it's a 50% chance maybe, right? So how And I think you... might have less possibility than may. So then what would you say then? What's the actual modal you would use then? I think might. Right? So might and may really kind of mean the same thing, right? I mean... Would you would you like to use could or is could too low for you? No, could is too low. Could is too low. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, you, you can go with might then. I think might works, right? Or a computer so, error might have happened or occurred. A computer error might have happened. A computer error might have occurred, right? Fantastic, yeah. fantastic. Those are good 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 ways of doing it. So Kwang, let's say you are watching the news, right? And all of a sudden there is a news report that is saying that a lot of people are being taken to the hospital, okay? Uh, children, old people, young people, everyone is going to the hospital. What can you say about this, just looking at it in the, in the news? Yeah, teacher. Um, most of people must be in the hospital now. Yeah, so that works, right? Most people must be in the hospital now. But could you, would, would, it, would there be a way for you to maybe guess why the people are in the hospital? To use a, maybe think of a reason, maybe why they are in the hospital? Okay, teacher. Yeah. Uh, most of people should have been in the hospital uh, for the accident. Right, so an accident is a good, good idea, right? So maybe we can say, instead of should, Kwang, instead of should, what are the other modals that we can use, right? So we looked at might, may, we could, and also yeah. at must, right? Yeah. Maybe, yeah, maybe in the hospital um, because uh, of the accident. Yeah, so there could be an accident, right? or there must have been an accident, or there might have been an accident, right? So all of those are, are ways to think about that uh, yeah. when we see something like that, yeah. So good job with that, Kwong. Um, go ahead, Kwong. My, my ad model reducing mean you, you, 
uh, you're not sure about something, you, you call it the mode of reduction, is it correct? Yeah, with modal of deduction, mm -hmm. we don't yeah. use should, right? Modal of obligation, we use should. Yeah. Yeah. Did, 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 did mean you not sure about something? Is uh, robotion is uh, is did you? Is it correct? Yes, 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 yes. So if you are not sure about something, but you are making a guess, then you are deducing. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. That's a good question. Um, any other questions, guys, about this this grammar topic with might, may, might, or might, may, must, and could? Do you guys have any questions with uh, modals of deduction? There is one about must and might. You're uh -huh. saying they're basically the same, but mm -hmm. I don't know if it's true, but might, is it when you are less sure of something? You know, honestly, Felipe, and I think Murad, you're asking the same thing. There, there. It seems to me, just thinking about it from a conversational standpoint, there might be an accident, there may be an accident. To me, they, they honestly sound very similar. One doesn't give me too much more of a possibility than the other. They both seem to be about 50%. But... Um, if, if anything, guys, if anything, may to me means less likely. So might would mean more likely. I think must is the highest, then might, then may, and then could. But it's very close between might and may. Uh -huh. Right? For example, if I'm yeah. in a rainy, uh, rainy season here down in Brazil, uh -huh. I can say... Um, it it may rain in December. Yeah, which is right. The rainy season. Uh huh. But if I look at the sky and it's dark, you know, I can say it may rain today. Yeah. So I would use may or might, and I would be fine. Yeah, honestly, personally, I use may all the time for those kinds of situations. It may rain today, it may, um, uh, they, they may deliver the, you know, you know what? That's a great question, Felipe, right? For things that I am a little bit more, this is great, I'm glad you asked this question. For things that people control, I like to use might, right? For verbs that people control, I like to use might. For things that are from nature, that we are less mm -hmm. sure about, I use may, right? So think about this, like, it may rain today, right? But, for example, they might reopen the government tomorrow. Okay. Right? If you guys have heard of the United States, we don't have a government right now. The government is closed. <laughs> uh, maybe you guys have read this in the what news. What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> the, the government is closed because we have a bunch of idiot politicians uh, who think that they can uh, close the government down and still people can still go to work and live normally. Um, but that's because this country is full of idiot politicians. Uh, so, <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah, yeah. Government is shut down in the U.S. Yeah. Uh, and the, the, the army is still working, so Murad, sorry, Mexico can't invade. Uh, <laughs> uh, the army is still working, you know. Canada and Mexico, you guys can't invade. Sorry, but I don't understand. What do you mean, <laughs> invade? Invade if you want to invade America. Oh, right, right. And, uh, what, what do you exactly mean? As in, invade. let's say, invade. As in, let's say the government isn't working. Mexico could send an army and uh, take over California. I don't know. I mean, oh. <laughs> right, it used to all be part of Mexico before, right? Uh, the the entire Western United States was part of Mexico a long yes, time ago. Yes, yes, yeah. So Canada also, sorry, any Canadians? Uh, but you know, we do some some things are still open. The army is still working. Uh, the post office is still working. But if you want to get a passport, you have to. You cannot get one now. Um, many other government uh, government workers are not going to work. So if you go to the NASA website, nasa.gov, 
it says uh, we are closed because of uh, limited funding. Uh, so really? yeah, yeah, yeah. If you check, so what's right, the what's the reason for it? Because uh, President Obama is trying to, um, he wants to push for a healthcare uh, law, a very oh. big healthcare law, and the opposition is saying no, we will shut down the government un until there is more um, pu uh, more public opinion for this uh, move. I mean, Obama has a lot of support for many of his actions, but the uh, opposition is very angry th uh, about many things, and this is the first time in 17 years. The last time the government was shut down was in 1996. Uh, so, under Bill Clinton, who I think is still the best president in recent history. Uh, <laughs> a great guy. But yeah, so we, we have had a lot of crazy things, but so for example, tomorrow they might reopen the government, right? Because we're talking about people. But if we're talking about something that is really up to chance, really up to nature, that we are less confident about, then we should use May. I think that's a good, it's a, it's how I think about it personally. And I think uh, might have less possibility than May. You think might, might. have might have less than, less than May? Yes. Yeah, what's your reasoning for that, Murad, actually? I'd be interested to, to hear it, honestly. Maybe because might is the simple past of the word may. That's a good, that's a good way of thinking about it, right? If might is a simple past of may, then may is stronger than might, right? May is have, yeah. has that more possibility. Honestly, that's, I mean, I think it's a great question. Uh, to the native speaker, it doesn't really make a difference listening to the <laughs> either word, but... You, you we just have do both it opinions. right every time. Uh -huh, yeah, yeah, to be on the safe side, right? You can. Uh, so, anyway, guys, great questions, though. Um, anything else that we wanted to mention about these modals of deduction before we move on to the article? Yulisa and Heidi, you guys have been really quiet. I'm trying to <laughs> to write down some examples to not forget. But, uh -huh. yes, it's clear. Okay, awesome. Heidi, is everything clear for you as well? Yes, okay. Okay. Kwong, how about you, man? Yeah, keep going, teacher. Okay. Awesome, awesome, fantastic. So, guys, let's take a look at the article for today. And we started the article talking about crazy food, right? And the, the discussion article that we are going to speak about today is also about crazy food. Uh, I'm posting the link here. And I think I've already mentioned it to all of you guys, but if you want good English practice, I think a really good website to visit is npr.org. Um, this, news this news article that we are reading today is also from NPR, National Public Radio. They do a very, very good job. Um, let us, so I'm going to screen share real quick also so you guys can follow along. And let's get started. All right, so raising tastier sea urchins for foodies and the environment. Okay, sea urchins. We're going to talk about sea urchins today, and you guys are going to see what these things are. So this is a sea urchin, guys, right? Uh, it lives in the ocean, and it has a lot of spikes, and they come in many different sizes, colors, uh, flavors, right? And this is something that people eat, um, and let's check it out. Sea urchins are considered a culinary delicacy in many parts of the world, including Japan and the United States. The market for this foie gras of the sea is growing rapidly, so fast that supply can't keep up with demand. But a scientist in Birmingham, Alabama, says he's found a solution. He's built a sea urchin farm in his lab and has even developed a food for them to make them taste better. Now he wants to take his tasty urchins out of his farm and into restaurants across the country. Deep in a basement at the University of Alabama at Birmingham, biology professor Stephen Watts opens a door into a large wet room that smells, well, fishy. Inside, hundreds of spiny sea urchins sit in large blue tanks. Each urchin lives in a small cage that's about three inches high with different colored tags attached. The tags detail the different diets that Watts and his team feed these sea creatures. As I look into one of the cages, I see an urchin using its feet, which look like tiny tubes, to eat something that resembles spaghetti. 
They're slow eaters, Watts says, and they'll start at one end and eat it much like a rabbit might eat a carrot, from one end all the way to the other. Watts started his sea urchin farm nearly two decades ago as a sustainable solution to a big problem. Sea urchins have been so over-harvested that in some areas their numbers will never recover. For instance, during the heyday in the mid-1990s, Maine fishermen, Maine is a, is a state in the United States, uh, very northeast, the most northeast state, uh, very close to Canada, uh, Maine fishermen harvested about 50 million tons of sea urchins each year. These days, 90% of the original urchin population off the coast of Maine has permanently disappeared, Watts says. So this is Watts. A few floors above his sea urchin farm, Watts pulls out metal trays with plastic bags filled with those spaghetti-like strands the urchin was eating earlier. Watts says urchins, like many animals, are what they eat, and that's exactly what he's counting on. He's created a special feed to make his sea urchins taste better. Watts' feed contains essential nutrients that sea urchins would normally get from sea kelp. Kelp is like seaweed. It's the green stuff that floats in the water, so sea kelp. Why not just feed the urchins kelp? Scientists used to do that, Watts says, but then they realized it could lead to over-harvesting of kelp. When Watts started experimenting with, the, with feed a few years ago, he noticed that it seemed to change the taste of the urchins. So he decided to bring in someone with a more refined palate to confirm whether he was really onto something. That's where the Hot and Hot Fish Club in downtown Birmingham comes in. Owner Chris Hastings, a James Beard award-winning chef, has been Watts' unofficial taste tester for about two years. Right? So this professor, he really wanted to, to grow urchins that had really delicious flavor. So he decided to bring this guy, Chris Hastings, who is a chef, uh, into his research. Right? Uh, we're going to skip a couple of these things because it's not very important. Um, let's see. Let's see this last paragraph here. Meanwhile, Watts is facing another obstacle, money. Although his research is federally funded, that same money cannot be used to commercialize his product. So Watts still needs to find investors willing to help take his sea creatures out of the lab and onto a restaurant menu. Right. So this article really is about a very innovative uh, scientist, right? This guy is, is trying his, his very best to make a food item that is extremely popular, uh, something that is sustainable, right? If you no longer have to fish sea urchins out of the water and you can grow them in labs, then, and you can grow them in delicious flavors, then you don't need to destroy the environment or do other things that could harm, you know, sea urchins and the oceans and all those other things, right? Um, what do we think about this article, guys? First of all, what is, would you ever eat a sea urchin? Like, Felipe, would you ever eat a sea urchin? Well, I don't really like seafood, but it seems like it's normal, so I think I would try it. You try it? Heidi, have you ever had sea, uh, sea urchin before? They said yeah. it's very popular in Japan. Yeah, that's right. But it's very expensive. It's very expensive. We eat, uh, usually we eat urchin uh, with, with the sushi. With the sushi, okay. Sushi, yeah. Sushi is a common usage. Uh -huh. And do you eat just the, just the middle, right? The inside? Yeah, yeah, inside. And like, how does it taste? Um, it said a uh, foie gras like that. Mm. So it tastes like like it's liver, good. like yeah. It's so, good. does it taste like rubbery? What's the is the texture slippery kind of texture? Like a uh, mix of butter and a little sweet and a salty. Wow, that's incredible. I I don't know why I imagined the taste to be much more liquid. Maybe you know. Maybe like a soup or something, um, but that's interesting. Uh, when was the last time you had sea urchin? Uh, last week. Really? <laughs> yes. That's awesome. Okay, so 
Is it something that you eat regularly then? Maybe once a month? Yeah, if I order that uh, sushi, maybe one or two uh, sushi included. That is awesome. Yeah, we and don't I have that here. We are living in the seashore, seaside. Yeah. So we often eat each just uh, the very fresh from the sea. That is awesome. I never I had no idea. Uh, see you later, Kwong. Take care. Uh, so, Yulisa, what would you do? Would you ever eat sea urchin if something like that was offered to you on a table? Uh, yes, I I would try it. I would be curious to know how it tastes. Uh huh. Would you? Um, do you think that this this idea that this scientist is using different flavors would would that be something that you would? Let's say you you like the the first sea sea urchin. Um, would you be open to trying the other? flavors, the other options as well? Uh, I think so. Why not? That's good. That's good. No, that's good. That's adventurous. Uh, but I think uh, this, uh, the option of having them in, for farming them, it could be good in order to to prevent the over-harvesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that you can grow them in, in a special place. But I guess that would make them to be more expensive too. Yeah, right. I don't really know how much the cost is going to uh, change if the if, if it's in a lab versus if it's in the ocean, right? Because in a lab setting also, you would need to, you know, uh, it would cost money, I would think. Um, Murad, what do you think? Would you ever eat a sea urchin if it was offered to you? Well, I think it might be rich in different types of omega. So, yes. I definitely would like to try. That's awesome. Okay, so you guys are all very adventurous. Uh, I probably would not. <laughs> I, I would uh, say, like, for example, Heidi, I have had sushi many times here, but I would not, uh, I have never seen them offer sea urchin with sushi, unfortunately. So, um, didn't get a chance to try it. This and is a sushi. So, it's a fried sushi? No, a fresh roll. A fresh roll of sushi, and is the yeah. is this the sea urchin also inside? Yes. Oh, okay. That doesn't look that bad, <laughs> right? the The yeah. picture in the article looked more more scary for me, actually. <laughs> it was it it was very. It had all the spines sticking out. I I don't know if I can do. It seems delicious, right? Yeah, it seems delicious. I don't know if it's, <laughs> it's going to be. Right. Uh, so anyway, guys, let's let's get to the article. So we are talk, or let's go to the questions. We are talking about modals of deduction, right? Have out of the entire class, I think Heidi is the only person who actually tasted sea urchin before, right? Yeah. Nobody else tried it before. No, not me. No. Felipe, none of you guys. Okay. Uh, in that case, we can use modals of deduction to talk about what it could taste like, right? All these different things. Um, do you guys think that, you know, uh, is it possible for, you know, cultures like Japan, we always hear about Japan being an extremely healthy society, right? Uh, people have such long uh, lifespans and um, the seafood contributes to the people's lifespan and diet and all those other things. Do you think there is benefit in exploring how different foods can, you know, help um, different foods that we haven't tried before. If trying those foods, including them in our diet, can that possibly benefit us from a from a health perspective? So I think Murad, you were talking about this earlier. Um, what do you think about that? I think yes, especially seafood. Uh huh. It's what very rich in in omega. Very rich in omega three, omega six, right? Six, yeah. Yeah, and what do those what do those do for us? I mean, why is what's the importance of omega three, omega six? They are important for the overall health of our hearts, the blood. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've heard that they even lessen the amount of cholesterol in our blood. Mm -hmm. And so some people. Some people even say they help with memory, I've heard. It helps the brain yes. as well. 
Yeah. And that's another thing. Uh -huh. So it's good for our brains. So why not, Murad? Why not just have a go to the store and buy a little tablet of omega three vitamin, omega three uh, fatty acids? Why not just get it from the pharmacy? It's not the same. It's not the same. How's it not the same? It's the same omega three from the sea urchin, omega three from the pharmacy. No, they they, well, we can they add some chemicals to conserve to conserve the the thing that they put. Yeah, right. Because if they were to sell pure omega three, it would be very expensive for them, I think, right? And it will expire very quickly. Yeah. That's a good way of thinking about it. Ulisa, do you agree with Murad? Uh, yes, uh, the seafood it is said to be the the most healthiest uh, food to have. So mm -hmm. I think the sea urchin would be another type of very healthy food for us. Mm -hmm. Now Peru is a very seafood friendly country. Do, have you? Uh, do you guys eat sea urchins at all? Is it part of part of the part of the cuisine in Peru? No, it's not common. I've I've never heard about sea urchins. Uh huh. But it, the most common uh, is the fi fish, shrimp. Uh, yeah, those. Those, those kinds of fish. Places. Yeah. Okay, that's cool. But you do, you guys do, I think, appreciate uh, seafood being a very healthy for you, right? I think I think Peruvian people eat a lot of seafood compared to maybe other countries. Yes, especially on on the weekends, on Sunday, Sundays. Uh, yeah. Uh, a good ceviche is the basic that. <laughs> really? Yes. So, Personally, in my family, uh, uh, on the weekends, on Saturday, Sunday, sorry, uh, we prepare ceviche. Seafood. That's that is awesome. It's just it's just a almost like a tradition to have Sunday ceviche. Yes, like a tradition. That is awesome, you know. I said, I, I think I told you guys, I had ceviche like one or two times in my life, and it was very good, but um, I didn't realize, I thought honestly that in Peru, it was something that you only have maybe wedding, a special occasion, but not something very regular, but I guess it is very regular to have yes. it every week. That's awesome, that's great. Um, Heidi, so do you think there's benefit in, let's say, Japan? starts to export or this guy this guy in Alabama you know he starts to export sea urchins to India Brazil Peru Mexico oh, no, I, I can catch urchin you can just you, you can just catch them yes yes in your place like even in Madison Wisconsin probably uh -huh. not I'm just kidding probably not but yeah but like ocean water has them right yeah, but any, anywhere you can catch urchin. Mm -hmm. Japan is concentrated on uh, curiosity against every seafood. Mm -hmm. But other countries uh, don't care about that, right? People yeah. Don't that. They don't care about that. A lot of uh, some, uh, uh, what is it? Uh, kind of noodle, right? So very painful. Exactly, exactly. But you know, they these things that they are, I guess, I mean, is this a cultural, can this become a cultural phenomenon? Maybe if this guy can get restaurants and other organizations to buy his lab-grown lab -grown sea urchins, could it become something that is popular everywhere? Maybe. I don't know. In the United States, it's not that popular. I don't know why the article said, Japan and the United States. Like I've never had sea urchin in my life, and mm -hmm. I've lived here many years. You know, seafood is contaminated. Seafood accumulate a lot of contamination, even urchin as, as well. So if mm -hmm. you take some um, supplement, maybe tablet is much better. Yeah, people here, you know, honestly, Murad. That's why I was bringing that up. It's like people here usually just, you know, they go to the vitamin store and they buy like a drum of vitamins, like omega three, <laughs> omega seven, omega six, right? And maybe because we're lazy, but I mean, honestly, it's uh, if you talk to somebody who considers themselves healthy, mm. like I have a friend who thinks he's very healthy. He is just 
popping vitamins in his mouth like medicines. Yeah, you know? for example, uh, people can make water, right? Uh, if you uh, burn the hydrogen, it connects with uh, oxygen in the air. They mm -hmm. can make water. It's pure water. But mm -hmm. if you uh, got water from the water well, it's a little contaminated. Which is better? Maybe uh, the uh, uh, first one is better. Mm -hmm. Healthy. Yeah, and right? Pure water. Absolute pure water, H2O, right? Hydrogen yeah, and oxygen. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And that tablet is better. If Organic food. Nutrition. Exactly. The next, the, the, the next billion dollar business, organic water. <laughs> <laughs> make it in your, make it in your bedroom. <laughs> you know, uh, I'm sure it's someone is thinking about that right now. Um, and Felipe, last but not least, do you think this, this business idea or what this guy is doing with sea urchins, can it become something that gets more popular because of health reasons or any other reasons? Yeah, for sure. I think it, it's got a a good chance to become a success, successful business. Mm -hmm. But I do think it depends on culture and marketing. Explain those two things. Those are two big things. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if he finds like an investor that could do the business part of it, it could become a a Coca Cola of tomorrow. You know what I mean? Yeah. Somebody that is selling the idea. Uh huh. And then what about the culture aspect of it? Well, the culture. I mean, culture because not everybody like eating this kind of stuff. Even though it might be normal in Japan or. These are the countries, like in Brazil, it's not everybody that is used to eating this this kind of things. Mm -hmm. Is seafood generally popular in Brazil, or in maybe in some parts of Brazil over other parts? Um, yes, but not everybody like it, uh -huh. and it's more expensive too. Really? Okay. Yeah. So. Because Brazil, Brazil has a lot of water. You guys have a lot of rivers and a big ocean near you. You know. I know yeah, why yeah, they we don't do, like it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> why, don't, why, don't, why don't you guys like it, Murad? Why do you think they don't like it? Maybe because of the way it smells. Ah, maybe the smell of seafood, right? Yes. Well, I think the states that uh, are in the coast, they have a tradition of seafood. Mm -hmm. But not every state, you know. Personally, I mean, you know, Brazilian food in terms of uh, what we know about in the U.S. is really just like churrasco and the Brazilian barbecue. Uh, Brazilian, I think Brazilian uh, food in the outside of the United or outside Brazil, people have this idea that it's just all about meat and barbecue and beef and, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um. I have to say it. It's the best food in the world. <laughs> <laughs> churrasco is the best food in the world? Not just churrasco, but, you know, like in Minas, the state where I live, we have yeah. our typical food. It's so good. It's so good. I've been to the States. I spent a couple months last year there. Uh -huh. And I was so willing to come back <laughs> just for the food yes <laughs> oh man have you did you go to any of the Brazilian uh, steakhouses here in the US yeah to a couple of them but I couldn't be going every time because they're pretty expensive they are very expensive actually there is there's one in my city and they it is very expensive I think it's like sixty to eighty dollars for some barbecue you know beef and barbecued steak so you can't go all the time not on my uh, salary maybe other people can uh, <laughs> but yeah it's it's crazy um, anyway that guys was one, that was yeah. one dish I had that I really enjoyed that was an Indian chicken it Indian was, chicken yes it was very good chicken chicken tikka masala maybe uh, I don't uh, know the name of it, but it, it it's spicy. 
it had some some sauce on it. It's uh, so good. I'm I'm Indian myself, so uh, I I ate those foods growing up. Probably uh, chicken tandoori is very popular. Chicken tikka masala. Masala means spice. So and, oh, maybe that's that's the one I had then. And tikka tikka means like small pieces. So small pieces of chicken with spice. Um, it's very delicious. We eat it with bread. We eat it with rice. We eat it with soup. Everything really. So it's. Uh, if you guys Google those, you'll find examples of many pictures and things like that. So, um, anyway, guys, fantastic class once again. Unfortunately, we are out of time. Uh, did we have any last questions about modals of deduction or sea urchins or food or any of these different topics? Elisa, I think maybe you wanted to say something? No. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> it's all clear. It's all clear. What about you, Heidi and Murad? You guys okay too? It's okay. Awesome. Yes, it's okay. And Felipe, everything's good. Yeah. Everything's now, good. now I want to have churrasco tomorrow, man. <laughs> you enjoy it. Now I have to drop sixty dollars. Thanks to you, Billy. <laughs> man. That's, that's but alrighty, guys. Well, you guys are free to join me. My next class is starting right now. Otherwise, uh, I'll see you guys all very soon. Okay, okay, see you soon. Bye. 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 Yeah, take care, bye guys. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye. So, oh, really? <laughs> yeah, so especially I think in Vietnam there are a lot of uh, people interested in that. And in another class we were, we were talking about um, uh, capoeira and uh, <laughs> a few other uh, like martial arts you know, from Brazil. I think Brazilian jiu-jitsu also, right, Felipe? Right. Yeah. yeah, we have that here. Fantastic. That is awesome. So, hey, Murad, how's it going, man? Hey, how are you? Good, good. How is life in La Ciudad uh, Soberana y Libre de Monterrey? Mm, everything is all right right now. <laughs> you know, I love that about Mexico. Every state... The name is El Estado Soberano y Libre de Nuevo Laredo. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. It's like it's it was. I was looking at the name of a of a, of a state in Mexico. I think it was like Chihuahua. It's like Chihuahua. El Estado yeah. El Estado Soberano y Libre de Chihuahua. I was like, that's so awesome. Yeah. Uh, I, I love that. I love that. Um, here good. in in the U.S., we are so boring. It's just the state of New York. You know, uh, not the sovereign and free state of New Laredo, I mean, or Chihuahua. That's awesome. That's awesome. Anyway, so yeah, states, cities, counties. Yeah, a lot of things. It's it's great. It's great. I love that yeah. about different countries. So, guys, let's get started. And uh, I have a question to begin the class for all of you. So, what is the craziest thing you have ever uh, tried when it comes to food that that you've ever eaten? It can be dessert. It can be appetizer, main course. Let's start with Felipe. <laughs> it, it was actually a funny situation, but I think it's when I tried to eat dust. You tried to eat dust? Yes. <laughs> really? Where? I, I, I was a child, and I was <laughs> laying against the window. I don't know why, but I started to eat the little dust that was in the... That was in the window? Yes. <laughs> oh, man. Do do you remember the taste or how how was that? I mean, uh, I mean, I've tried a lot of better things after that. <laughs> <laughs> right? You probably forgot. The, you don't want to remember. There's no point no, remembering. Yeah. I don't. That's awesome though. Dust. I've never heard that. Like, I mean, I think when we are children, we we put everything in our mouths, right? I mean, like yeah. little, like you know, little kids, like two years old, three years old. Anything that's near them, they put in their mouth, they, they taste. So, yeah, no, that makes sense, Felipe. That's awesome. Yeah. Heidi, what did you taste that was really I guess? Um, before we do that, though, Felipe, how's it going, man? Hey, good, and you? Good, good. How's life in uh, Brazil? Well, busy as always, I guess. <laughs> yeah, right? Good, good to be back in your class. Absolutely. Well, good to have you as well. Um... Quang, how's it going? How's Vietnam? 
Uh, it's going well, teacher. Thank you. Thank you very much. Awesome. Been? I've been good. I've been good. I'm glad to see so many yeah. people join in the first five minutes. Yeah. This is great. So, actually, guys, let's get started and let's quickly. Um, have you guys all met each other? Felipe, Heidi, Ulisa, Kwang? Have you guys met each other? I've yeah. met Heidi uh -huh. and Lisa too, but not, not Kwang. Kwang. No. Uh -huh. Kwang, do you want to introduce yourself to everyone? Yes, I'm, uh, I know Heidi and uh, Julie Isa, but uh, I don't know Philip. Philip, uh, I'm from Vietnam. Okay. I'm white. Uh, I like uh, learning English. Uh, in Colingo, I have two lovely children, a daughter and a son. Yeah. I'm a teacher in Taekwondo too. Yeah, Kwong uh, is a yeah. Kwong is a fighter. He loves uh, to uh, teach Taekwondo. So, how was your? Uh, it it is Sunday now, right? So, how was yesterday? How was your Saturday? Saturday, oh yeah. Saturday. Mm, I met you know, the neighbor, the wife. Uh huh. <laughs> In the first ground. Uh huh. Yeah, she is a nosy person, so I avoided her. But finally, I met her <laughs> in the corridor of the first first floor. That's awesome. Did you? Are you guys she friends? Found my um. Oh, what happened? <laughs> so I needed to explain about that from the scratch. <laughs> the nice. Kind of <laughs> Nice. That's great. I know sometimes sometimes we have neighbors who are uh, different uh, different personality, right? Sometimes sometimes they're nosy. Sometimes they have difficult uh, or just different uh, you know personalities. I know yeah. my my mom had a neighbor when I was a young child. Uh, this neighbor used to always come to my mother, yeah. and and ask for just small things in the house, right? Like mm. she didn't have sugar in her house, she'd come to my mother. You know, mm. can I please borrow some sugar? And my mom used to tell me later, you can't borrow sugar. You got, you take it. I mean, you know, <laughs> there's no way to borrow sugar, borrow food, right? So uh, she had those problems when she was uh, younger, in her mid-20s. Um, no, not mid-20s, like early 30s, I should say. So, yeah, n nosy, nosy neighbors sometimes are yeah. not very fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Hey, how's it going, Yulisa? Hey, Farhan. I'm doing well, and you? Good, good. Things are great. Uh, how's your Saturday? Hey, it is good. It was good. I, uh, in the morning, I went to to take some certificates, uh -huh. and in the afternoon, I went for shopping and to eat uh, a dessert. Nice. What kind of dessert was it? Flan? No, it's called <laughs> picaro picarones. Picarones, okay. It's very Peruvian. <laughs> I need to get a picture of this picarones here. Let's see. Oh, this is this looks like a, a fried donut. Yeah, yeah, but it's made of. Yeah, it's like a donut, but it tastes different, and we put honey to cover it. That's Very awesome. It, it, look, it looks super delicious. Yeah, picarones. Um, awesome. Fantastic. It's very appropriate for our class today because we're talking about food and we're actually talking about bazaar food. Uh, you know, uh, bazaar to me, bazaar to somebody from a Western uh, perspective.